You are listening to the Lucha Central Podcast Network. And now, Lucha Central Weekly. Hello and welcome to the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast. This is the podcast that lets you know all of the latest happening in the world of Lucha Libre. Each week, our team discusses news and events from the past week, as well as previewing the week ahead, covering Mexico-based promotions and top independents, along with Luchador-related news from throughout the United States. The Lucha Central Weekly Podcast is part of the Lucha Central Podcast Network on LuchaCentral.com. This podcast and others from the network are also available on all major podcast platforms, including iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, PodBay, and Speaker. My name is Miranda Morales, and I'm one of the co-hosts of the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast, and I do this with a team. So I'm going to bring in the other members right now. Introducing first, he is the dashing one, Mr. Dusty Murphy. Hey. Yeah, how's, how's it going? It's it's going great. How's it going with you, Miranda? I am doing very well. We are heading into the end of the year. A very mm-hmm. busy weekend up ahead in the Absolutely. world of Absolutely very which exciting. We talk about plus a very busy week that we've had. So oh, absolutely. we have the bookends of all the news and events. Uh, and speaking of covering news and events in the world of Lucha Libre, well, this man is our fact man. He brings us all the facts, but who am I talking about? Who? 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 It who? is the one and only Brendan Barr. Hey, hey. Oh, that's who. That's, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> who? That's who. Oh, oh. We are, we are super busy this <laughs> week, and, uh, because of unluted things, I'm also super exhausted, so this is going to be an Extra fun one for me. We're just gonna <laughs> barrel is it on one of through those it. Super exhausting days where like everything is funny and you just kind of give up already. Like the days you just give up I, during the middle of the day. You're like, this is just what the day will be. I'm, I'm yep. inches away from that. Like if I just oh, start good. giggling part way through, you'll know what happened. There we go. Then we lost them. Then <laughs> we lost Brendan. <laughs> Brendan is, is no longer in contact with us. <laughs> We'll, we'll make it through. I mean, we got to because this is the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast English Edition where we bring all of the latest and greatest news and events uh, to Lucha Libre fans. And as I mentioned earlier, we had a jam-packed week with one of the biggest crossovers in wrestling history plus one of the biggest events now in Lucha Libre happening this Saturday in which we are going to review and give you maybe some tidbits and some cool things that are going to be happening this weekend. So, you know what? Usually we, we uh, you know, do some fun banter. Uh, and, of course, we will have that throughout the show. But because we have so much to cover, we are going to go straight into it. So, Brendan, kick us off with the road back to shows. All right. So uh, we're going to start with my, my favorite part, Mexico City. Orange. This is actually good news because, as uh, we will be discussing later, Triple Mania is this weekend. So being orange means they could do it. However, um, Veracruz uh, actually made the green status. So now oh. Mexico very is is very smart and hasn't said that green means you get carte blanche, but it does mean are actually able to, to run shows, and Veracruz uh, have a pretty rich lucha, lucha tradition. So we may see some indies moving their shows over there because it's a little easier to do that. We may see, uh, I mean, I don't want to see the big two doing TV tapings there, but anybody else who might be able to borrow a TV studio might and, and do some stuff in Veracruz because it is very friendly there. Uh, we'll see. We're going to keep our ears on that. 
Um, and then in more unhappy news related to the COVID, uh, we did have the news story. Lucha Central put up the link. And, uh, other, other, uh, Bestia666 put up his, uh, on his, uh, socials as well. But, uh, Damien666 and his wife both went to the hospital with COVID related symptoms. I don't have much of an update on that. Uh, we, at this point, I actually view news like hospital and not hearing anything usually means things are going well. It's, uh, when we hear things right away that things didn't go very well. So, uh, best of, uh, health to them. I, uh, yeah. I certainly don't want to, uh, to comment on what else would could be going on there, but it's always, it's always harder when I, it's somebody that I, I have seen many times and just kind of, they're part of my extended family. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, and he was in WCW and part of the cruiserweights thing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, mm-hmm. like a lot of us remember him from that. So he has a, a you know, like a yeah. more of a presence That's... in mind than most luchadors from that era with a lot of Americans, which is Indeed. very cool. Yeah. yeah, exactly. People, I mean, that's part of why he's, he's always in my aware circle of awareness because it started all the way back then and he's yeah. just so prolific with working right now. Um, and then in other news that is not at all of COVID related, uh, we had, we had a couple of uh, interesting things going on. The chaos announced that they've exclusive contracts for uh, Dolce Canela, Baby Love, Charo Negro, and Commanders. Command recently went uh, viral. This means that those yeah. of you that want to see that craziness that he does, you're probably going to have to find Chaos. They've been more showing up more on the uh, Mass Lucha YouTube channel lately, but they did have those uh, two eye pay per views at the beginning of the uh, COVID season, so they may be trying to gear up for of that sort of thing with the, some of these exclusive sightings. Uh, Dr. Wagner recently won their, their heavyweight championship too. So they're, this is uh, yeah. an, an indie program that's kind of one to keep an eye on. I just wish they made it easier for me to find their, their new content instead of uh, hiding it under their reality show. <laughs> uh, to put it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there were so many times where I would find them on YouTube and be all excited, like, oh, they're doing a live broadcast. And it's, it was like a reality show instead. <laughs> yeah, I fell prey to that it's, one time too. <laughs> it's exceptionally hard for me because I would, if it was, a, if they were doing the reality show in English, I would watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I, all of tough enough, <laughs> but I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't watch a reality show. Spanish. I'm not at that level yet, guys. Just not there. Um, we, we do have a couple of events that are, are gearing up. Uh, so ROH Final Battle is next weekend. This weekend, Fist Wrestling in San Diego, which uh, uh, Dusty and I have mutual Facebook friends with them, and I believe Miranda's in contact with them too. Uh, they're they're uh, they're doing a show. Uh, in San Diego, it's I believe they're going to be broadcasting it on the the book base at some point. But uh, I was unable to find specific details on on how to watch it other than in person. And uh, I'm not willing to fly to San Diego this weekend. Yeah, I, I got yeah, we, I got sure. I got other stuff to watch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it does look it's a good show. And if you are in the San Diego area, you're not already following Fist Wrestling on Facebook. Could follow Fist Wrestling and find out where their show is going to be, and and then support them by T-shirts and and support the wrestlers. Uh, and then it is the middle of December, so we have uh, we mentioned this before. UWN and the NWA are taking the rest of December off. It looks like um, our ROA your final battle is probably going to do like their two annual best of shows, and and. Uh, and, and CMLL tip will also use one of their broad to do to rerun matches that are either best up representative of the year. So you're the next couple of weeks there, we may be light on new wrestling, but the good news is you're going to get a very highly 
curated content of the wrestling that happened over this year. And some of it was a little, little hard to find thanks to all the uh, alternative plans people had to do. But that is my road shows. I wanted to end on that nice little uh, yeah. Yeah. Christmas note, I guess it is. <laughs> uh, I, I look forward to watching all of the NWA over the Christmas break again, because that was <laughs> my, uh, yeah. We will, uh, we will be talking about the year in review at some point in the near future, and you'll get lots of my, uh, lots of my, my theories on that. And, oh, you do have a brief, um, indie rundown this week as well. I do. I do. IWRD had a fantastic event. They, uh, I, so I only got to see some of it live. I, I came in at the end of the, the show where you had, uh, Galeno del Mal, Hijo, Dr. Wagner, Puma King, and Hijo de Canis Lupus, uh, and then Hijo de Hey and, uh, Hijo de la Spectro Jr. all in a giant drum of a match. Uh, Puma wound up winning that one with a foul. Uh, it's a thing that I've noticed a lot is they will put all these great wrestlers in there and it seems like nobody wants to lose. So somebody will kick someone else in the junk in front of the referee. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it works um, though, I guess. <laughs> I'm not angry about it. I'm not angry about it at all because we got like five minutes of great wrestling and sure we didn't get a great finish, but I, now I want to see all of them do it again because sooner or later somebody has to be submitted, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then the main was is Dr. Wagner Jr. and uh, Mayo in a, a Puestas match. However, I don't, uh, because of the way it went down, nobody got their hair shaved. The, uh, as you can imagine, Dr. Wagner, a lot of people brawled and then, uh, the uh, spot was not seen on where a pile driver apparently was used on Dr. Wagner and, uh, and, uh, the referee counted the one referee, the three, but IW uses two referees pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. Second referee came in, knocked the first one over his Dr. Wagner's head, reversed the decision and said that, uh, because the pile driver is technically illegal in Mexico, mm-hmm. Dr. Wagner won because he used an illegal move. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> you know what? I mean, just, we just don't got the the time to to. I mean, how do we, is it opposite day? Is yeah, that that's is, very. <laughs> I, mean, I guess whatever it takes to get there again, but that's some cool <laughs> logic. Well, well, no, the because Capo apparently used the illegal. Okay. So. Yeah. Oh. So Pat, yeah. Okay. I just I didn't see it. I didn't see it on screen, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes it, sense. it makes that makes that part of it make more sense. It's still pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like it sounds awesome. And and uh, I mean it, nobody got their hair shaved, so I don't know. Oh, they, I mean I guess they worked their way around that because of all the the referee madness, but uh, it looks more like they're trying to set up a match with maybe a bigger crowd. There were some good matches on the undercard. I did go back and, and catch some highlights to that. And this is available on Lucha's channel as well as again, have the results for IWRG always up on, uh, Lucha Central. So, uh, you had, a uh, Halcon Magico Legendary win a match, Dick Angelo, uh, Soberdosis TV star and, and Mexico in a match, Baby Extreme, Puma do o, uh, in a, in a match, which was for the, the tournament, uh, the Intercontinental Light Championship, Baby Extreme, moved on to that. And this is the same Baby Extreme we were talking about as a possible breakout star. Yeah. So, uh, it, it is, uh, it is a fantastic match to go back and watch. Um, and then Toxin and, and the Tiger had a, had another match for the, for a belt. Uh, Toxin said he put up his mask if he lost um but uh it it sounds like they're gonna have a rematch anyway so there we go um that was our iwrg and i'm gonna look real quick to see 
told you guys I was going to do. That was the thing I put in my notes, and I thought I'd said. Eh, uh-huh. Um. Yeah, so there was a bunch of memes show that I somehow get notes written down for. So I'm going to just say that there is a Lucha meme show, and I don't know what I did with my notes for it. So, but those were the two that I was to have, and I'm not going to make you guys sit around and wait to pick it up. I will keep those notes, and I will forward that future show. Okay, perfect. That is the Indie Roundup. Well, a big thank you to Brennan, who always brings us on the road back to shows and our Indie Roundup. And you know what else always happens? Well, we always have the wonderful Denise Salcedo, who lets us know what's happening with this week's Lucha Central Central. So we're going to kick it off to her and let her do her thing. Why should you visit TheChairShot.com? TheChairShot.com is your home for hard-hitting reviews, news, opinion, and analysis with attitude. Why? Because you're smarter than the average fan. TheChairShot.com. Always use your head. Hey everyone, it's Denise Salcedo here in Lucha Central Central with a reminder of where and when to catch all of the great network content this week. Get the full lineup and listen to all of our shows in the podcast network section of LuchaCentral.com. On Tuesdays, Math, Max, and Mayhem takes you inside the world of Lucha Underground as they take you weekly through the series with the benefit of hindsight and the benefit of special guests from the groundbreaking series. Check out the premiere video stream every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern on the Lucha Central YouTube channel and at LuchaCentral.com. Then listen to it on your favorite podcast platform every Wednesday. Tuesday nights live, it's WrestleBoss, where Fabi Chulo talks MMA and pro wrestling with special guests and listener call-ins. Visit WrestleBossLive.com Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific to listen live or call in with questions or download the show on podcast platforms on Wednesdays. Wednesday nights live on Facebook, it's Spanish show La Mesa de los Margaros, giving you both the news and the cheese made from around the lucha world. Special guests and a whole lot of fun make it one of the most talked about shows in Mexico. Thursdays, it's straight out of the bodega with Papo Esco and PWR promoter Gabriel Ramirez as they have guests from throughout the wrestling world pull up to give an inside look into their careers. From indie standouts to television superstars, each week brings a new name and perspective. On Friday, it's your double dose of Lucha Central Weekly podcast, one in English y el otro en español. Lucha Central Weekly is where you'll find all the top stories of the week, both inside and out of the ring from Mexico and anywhere luchadores are in action across the globe. Be sure to subscribe and follow all your favorite Lucha Central Network series on your favorite podcast platforms, either by their own series name or subscribe to the Lucha Central Podcast Network show pages to get all of the shows in one easy feed and please consider giving a rating to help more fans find the shows that you love for now this is denise salcedo signing off from lucha central central have a great week lucha-masks.com by pro wrestling revolution bringing you in partnership with mask republic the lucha brothers as well as japanese legend ultimo dragon Go to lucha-masks.com and fight lucha strong with masks from your favorite lucha legends and pro wrestling revolution luchadores. Stay safe in style and represent your favorite luchador. Get yours now at lucha-masks.com, powered by Pro Wrestling Revolution. As always, a huge thank you to Denise Salcedo, who brings us this week's Lucha Central Central, letting you know what's happening throughout the Lucha Central Podcast Network. Up next, Dusty, well, he's going to bring us some news on what happened this week uh, with WWE SmackDown and Raw. Yeah, well, on SmackDown, first up, we had Rey Mysterio and a six-man Intercontinental Champions tag team tribute match to Pat Patterson. I mean, that's a mouthful. But, yeah, three men on his side, trios, basically, um, Pat Patterson Memorial. This match was really nothing special. Um, the closing sequence was chaotic, but that's the same kind of chaotic that we've kind of come to expect from these matches in the WWE. 
And with the finish of Daniel Bryan, Bryan rather pinning Sami Zayn, I feel like that was probably the original match before they turned it into a champions match. It seems to set up a storyline between the two. Ray was largely just there as a famous former Intercontinental Champion. Like, when you think of Intercontinental Champions, you think of Ray. So it was nice that he was there, but the match itself was nothing special. Then afterwards, the Familia Mysterio appeared as ringside support for Murphy again this week, and he wrestled against King Corbin again this week. It was another terrible match again this week but at the end the new part king corbin had some hired goons cutler and blake and they jumped ray and dominic and they kind of fought and murphy chased them off but then he ran into the end of days and king corbin got the pin to win the match and that was it and then we had really nothing on raw but you know as our listeners know we leave no stone unturned in our search for Lucha Libre <laughs> landscape here. And when I wasn't seeing Angel Garza on Raw, I wanted to know what the deal was. I did some investigating. He's been sent for some seasoning. He's on WWE main event. So I had to check it out. And I discovered he's actually been having a pretty amazing run on main event the last few weeks. He picked up a couple of wins against Lince Dorado and Humberto Carrillo uh, with the wing clipper finish. It looks great. He's got short hair now, and he's wearing a suit to the ring. But he's cool, so he doesn't wear a tie. It's, he rips the pants off in what look like business shoes or wrestling boots. It's incredible. I really enjoy it. This week he had a great match with Keith Lee. Uh, the fortunately broke his winning streak. Keith Lee won, but size, you know, like you just can't overcome that much size when you got Keith Lee in the ring. But still, he's getting a lot of high profile matches. These are the main events on main event. He's wrestling these matches and they've been great matches so far. So hopefully they've got something in store for these Lucha guys instead of just downgrading them to the C level show. But There's we'll see. Uh, yeah. And but There's I always think they, two minds of that. Yes. I think they're yeah. going to have plans for Angel, though. Monday night after Raw, there was a WWE.com exclusive. I don't know why they didn't air it during the show, but it was an exclusive to WWE.com where he gives a rose to a mystery woman. And he tells her that we have seen him give a rose to all the women of the world, but this rose is only for her. And a woman's hand reaches out wearing red nail polish. And this is what I believe is our subtle sign that WWE is going to pair him with Eva Marie. And, you know, oh, she's... Oh, no. Well, I, I know, <laughs> she, but it makes sense in some ways. She's a Latina, and she's fluent in Spanish. Uh, she was on a dating show in Mexico before her time at WWE. All, all these things are Garza, so they kind of naturally fit, and I like the idea. I Eva Marie so. gets a bad reception from some fans. A lot of, you know, people are turned off. But she actually tried her best to improve during her last run, and with somebody like Angel to kind of help her in the ring and help cover her flaws, and she was at least previously training with Br the Brian Kendrick. I don't know if she still is, but she was. And so I think she's genuinely trying, and I'm interested to see what they come up with, and if it gets my man back on Raw, I'm good with mm -hmm. that. And it seems like they're kind of pairing some people up with ladies right now. You know, Ricochet got paired up with Dana Brooke, and I don't know if they're leaning into something like another mixed match challenge or, you know, just having some couples putting together maybe. I don't know what's going on, but, you know. that that's... is So that is a thing that they normally would they've done in the last couple of years around this time is the mixed match tag. Mm -hmm. It does reasonably well. So, uh, you know, it does make sense to create teams that would do, do okay at that. And that is the main reason that it would bother me to have uh, Angel with, with her is that that means that it's a team that's going to win a lot of matches in that, those events. Yes, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm and right about that helping uh, Angel Garza coming back onto to Raw because 
they do, you know, those, those TV, uh, people behind the scenes love Eva Marie. So, uh, it helps them get back on to, to Raw, though it is still a very interesting pairing and it'll be very interesting to see what that dynamic looks like. And I think especially when you look at Raw and, and SmackDown, I'd say even especially Raw, you know, it really is more for the entertainment value. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. um, so luckily they have NXT where if you want to watch, you know, more uh, of, uh, a little bit more dynamic women's wrestling than you have that. Um, and SmackDown and Raw still have those glimpses when they have good programs and matches. They're great. But, you know, as far as uh, where Eva Marie fits into all of that, really, well, Raw is the best. Yeah, yeah they're, they're hurting for that high-end wrestling talent now. Mm-hmm. Like, outside of Lucha, Luchadors, they're, they've got... Their main draws in the women's division are just not able to wrestle right now. Yeah. So, and uh, it's yeah. just going to come in, and you know, generally with something like this, somebody coming in, WWE straps a rocket to their back, and so if they, you know, really send her all the way up, and she's paired up with Garza, that's nothing but good for him. I don't think this is a situation where either one of them. It's not like well, she needs him more than he needs her. They need each other equally. He legitimizes her in a big way, and she gets him that main event TV time, yeah. or at least main show TV time that he needs to show what he can do because he can, he's there. He can do it. He just needs sure. the opportunity to show us. So uh, of late, and then part of my my speculation, my, my negative reaction is, is of the rocket that people get is a, is the three week and then they go away. That's yeah. sometimes can, true. It depends. <laughs> It depends how the audience reacts to you, but we all know that Eva Marie was seemingly a Vince McMahon favorite, and he's used the Thunderdome to make sure his favorites stick, no matter what the audience actually thinks. <laughs> well, yeah, that, now the and, audience can't Yeah, tell I was going to say, now this is actually I'm perfect, booed. because now that she won't get booed out of a building. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, the timing is right for Eva Marie. <laughs> I, um, can the world handle it? <laughs> Look, we've already handled a lot, so. I, right? Yeah. 2020, I'm telling you not to you do mean, this to me. 2020 was just meant <laughs> to prepare us for this. Yeah. <laughs> the coming of Eva Marie. <laughs> She's, At this point, that horseman. makes way more sense than any of the other logic that's happened this year. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like only natural with everything else that's happened. Eva Marie comes back. Yep. Stop it! They'll hear you. <laughs> I was gonna say first Sting, now Eva Marie. What a year! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've just been so blessed this year with so many returns. Oh, oh my goodness! I'm oh, sorry. I had, I'm sorry. Oh, that was good. I love it's that. Just, <laughs> just pop right out. Just pop right out. Well, I mean, speaking of, of Sting, uh, yeah. AW this <laughs> week, Absolutely. and uh, of course, Dark and Dynamite both packed with some lucha matches. Yeah, on Dark we had a very significant lineup involving lucha matches. We had Brian Cage defeating Danny Limelight in a match that was great. Danny got in some lucha-inspired rope walking. Loved his spot. Uh, Cage is currently number four in the rankings in AEW. So, you know, we're going to see him on the way up. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. But he picked up the win over Danny Limelight. Diamante defeated Tessa Price. Jurassic Express defeated Falco and Mike Magnum. Brandon Cutler defeated Fuego Del Sol. Ivelisse defeated Skylar Moore. Big Swole sadly defeated the American Kaiju Lindsay Snow. I did not care yeah. for that one. Ugh. And oh. then the the match of the night for me, TH2 defeated Sotharea Tune and VSK. And this was a great match. It was Chun. Quicker. Yeah, Chun. Sorry. Chun. Yeah. No. <laughs> we, he goes by he goes by Cody, but he is uh he, uh. A Pacific Northwest wrestler. The whole region went nuts. When he was on television. The That's so cool. Pacific Northwest wrestling Twitter was on fire. So, yeah, 
Well, and they, they looked great. This was a great match. It wasn't as long as I expected, but for a first time tag team, it made sense. I, I was super hyped about it in advance because you knew AEW would be building TH2 to be as legitimate and fantastic mm-hmm. as possible in advance of that Wednesday mm-hmm. night match on Dynamite. And it was amazing. TH2 are really firing on all cylinders now and they, may have the best intro music in all of AEW. Their look and their physical awareness and their physical presence, everything, they have shaken off all the ring rust from earlier this year when they first came back. Even the way Angelico takes off his jacket, he just looks badass and important and cool. And they have that indefinable magic like that, just that cool, badass thing that draws you in. And there was a great moment towards the end where they did the Bucks pose, the Young Bucks pose as a taunt. Yeah. And they had more charisma to it than the Bucks do. I mean, it was incredible. And it was some amazing Rudo preening. But then Angelico picked up the win with a very painful looking Navarro death roll. That was an incredible. Yeah. Oh, that looked that. really good. Oh my gosh. Uh, was yeah. Looking like it was fantastic. We get treated to him using that, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. We get treated to him using that on on uh, dark, and uh, that is still one of the best one. And yes, please heap more praise on T H S. Yes. We love yeah. them. Yeah, well, this show. I was just saying, I, I love that that <laughs> dynamic almost how they're trying to kind of mirror uh, elements of the of the young books. And I understand the young books have gone through this period of evolution and and they're turning a little bit, but it's still very confusing too for me personally. Sometimes I like things a little bit more black and white, but I think if anyone's going to put a mirror to the young books and say, you know, this is who you've become, but this is who we are, you know, kind of mocking them, mm-hmm. it's th too. And I, I and I love that. It's a great role for them to be in for sure. Because they've actually, I mean, been wrestling for the majority of the same amount of time as the Young Bucks. They've just and, yeah, been and doing think, it outside of the United States. Yeah, and they've covered about as many miles as the Bucks. It's just been different <laughs> places, you know, like they've yeah, been yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And so, I mean, it was, it was a great match. I highly recommend this week's. I always recommend this week's Dynamite. But again, I recommend this week's Dynamite. It's free. Dark. It's on YouTube. Or Dark, rather. Sorry. Dark. <laughs> it's free. It's on YouTube. And, uh, you know, it's, what, what do you expect for free? This is amazing. You get a pay-per-view quality show almost every yeah. week, you know. You get, and it's yeah. You get long lineup. matches where people get to show off what they can do, which is, a thing that I now that I know that that's Dark's thing, I really enjoy Dark for it. I do too. Like it's yeah. just kind of it gives people the time to spread out and show their abilities in a way that you know maybe we haven't seen them before before they get to TV or to show off what they can do in hopes of getting on TV. And we've seen it work for people, you know. Like Dark mm-hmm. can be your stepping stone for somebody like Will Hobbs, of course. You know he. Dark to well, I mean, even dynamite. even TH2, because to your point that you made, they had a little bit of that rust. They needed they a little bit of that, that, that polish. Now that they're there, they, they're they taking the most of it. But uh, I, I said that on a, a social somewhere earlier. Like, no, I'm glad that there is a dark where they can do that. They can practice working in front of a cam because they needed it. And now we're getting better product out of them as a result. Yeah, and really, I felt like Tuesday on Dark was really kind of the intro for Wednesday on Dynamite, and that was good because they cheated our boys out of an intro on Dynamite, but they (laughs) took advantage of that, and they used it to jump the bucks before the bell rang. This match was amazing. Like, some matches are a marathon, but this match felt like a sprint. It was crazy. There was something like five 450s. Um, there were four super kick things. It was insane. There was just a flurry of finishers. Insane action. But, unfortunately, the Bucks, you know, they finally got the win. TH2 looked like they were going to win over and over, and the momentum would shift and go back and forth. It was a fantastic tag team match, and I loved it. Just loved it. And I'm honestly a little surprised that the won it, because 
wasn't for the title. This was just for a shot at the title. I know. Like, I thought they would win because yeah. they could get them a shot at the title and they could come to – but I feel like there must yep. be something more – to it every time i we've gotten so conditioned with wwe when they don't give us what we were expecting we're like oh damn that passed us by they should have given us that but AEW kind of sends you on a little side quest first and brings you back and then you see what you're yeah. expecting so hopefully we'll get some more of that you know maybe they'll just keep keep after the i mean we've seen that them and the acclaimed kind of even after the match the acclaimed came out and tried to run in on the Bucks, and SCU got involved again. And so I think we're going to see this continue. I don't think it's the end of this, but I'm surprised they didn't win the match. But we'll see what comes of it. I think the possibilities are endless, but every one of the possibilities leaves me excited about what's going to come next. Yeah, So absolutely. And then we had the match that everybody was hyped for, we had the Murder Hawk Lance Archer with Lucha Bros versus the Kingston family. And Lucha Bros got their intro during the commercial. I, I guess they're just not giving the Lucha guys intros this week on Dynamite. I don't know what the deal was, but they got their intro during the commercial and they instantly started brawling and the family pretty much instantly got the advantage on Lucha Bros with Penta being put through a table by Butcher before the bell ever rang and he was being helped by the refs and ringside crew and trainers backstage like just as the bell was ringing and the family immediately separated Ray Phoenix in the ring, and they took turns beating on him. Even Bunny beat on him a little before he was finally able to hit a cutter on Eddie yeah. Kingston. And he tagged in Archer, and he had some, you know, big hoss action, ran in the ring, started beating everybody up. It was awesome. I loved that part of it, but Archer being part of the team really threw me off. I wasn't understanding exactly his connection to all of it i guess it's just because pac went home to england for the holidays well they've also been building this uh lance archer is not is having a rivalry with uh um with Eddie Ed. King. yeah and so i, so, I, I see how he kind yeah. of fit but i still felt like it was kind of forced into spot you know maybe it's the beginning of something like i say generally AEW lets things play out we see why and no, so you know, I we'll felt like out of nowhere, but I, I yeah, yeah. I, I, I because they're doing two that's two stories colliding together. I'm I'm optimistic there's going to be a reason behind it other than we needed a six man tag this week. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> and but even with all of that and all the talent, I just felt like this match never got to the rhythm really I was expecting it to. The absence of Pentagon and his charisma and his ring work were part of that, because like, you kind of know what to expect. But to a larger degree, I just never felt like it was being what it could have been. Like it was, you know, I, I don't know, like it was supposed to be this big battle and it was just kind of a beat down. It wasn't as much of a battle as I expected. And but the match was largely decided by the numbers. Three on two handicap, even with Archer's size, meant that their fate was pretty much sealed. And despite all their best efforts, Ray Archer and uh, Ray Phoenix rather and Archer lost the match with Phoenix taking the pin. After the match, Archer attacked the family again, and they ran to the back. And that was kind of it for our yeah. guys, you know. But we'll see what happens. It's it's interesting. I, Other I than the fact that the AAA mega champion all over the, the second half of the show. Yeah, well, yeah. that's the, <laughs> well, from the Lucha Bros, yeah. And, and then <laughs> we had Kenny, and Kenny has had a huge week. This, um, he has been everywhere. I don't, I mean, he had largely the same promo on both Impact and Dynamite. I was, so, yeah. Go ahead. I was put out by, actually, so yes. let me. I was yeah. too, and I remembered they taped it, like, after last week's Dynamite, and there was a crowd, so I think they were afraid if any of it got out, at least it wouldn't be much different than the impact. I don't know. 
but it was it kind of felt like a bait and switch. Like let's drop yeah. this huge bomb, and now they're just stringing us along, um, which I, I understand right. is part of the purpose. But like the fact that they were so similar just felt I was a little yeah, yeah it was disingenuous. Yeah, the only difference was the helicopter. Yes. And. And, like, they've given the impression there's been a couple of things now that Kenny has doubled the amount of cleaner girls, and he shared some pictures of Ultimo Dragon with the Super J cup belts, but Kenny's face pasted on Ultimo Dragon's mask. And so they, I mean, we <laughs> haven't seen him bring out the, the Mega Compion Championship much, and I wish we would. Just in Be- that one match. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, at all. And but he's calling himself the trophy collector, and hopefully he's gonna, you know, start using. I think he's gonna have the girls start carrying them. I don't know the, if you remember there was a a tape. I believe it was 1997, the Tokyo Dome show, where Ultimo Dragon had like a parade of women carry out in swimsuits, carry out all the belts <laughs> of the Super J Cup before it came out. So I think Kenny's building to something like that. Is it and, is it sad that I didn't, even though I have never seen this, I didn't need you to to say that all those women were in bikinis because I, <laughs> you knew, yeah, you know, I just, you just know, just knew. Because that's, yeah. that's how they do it, and that's, so. that's, that's just but, uh, wrestling. Well, and, I and and I wonder if it's maybe Triple A isn't a big fan of him having it on so much, though I don't know why he wouldn't, no. um, why they wouldn't, because that's some good exactly. publicity. But also, and we'll talk about it in a second about his promo. But I mean, he really is trying to play off that I'm going to collect all these world champions. Then where are they? Like, then yeah. prove it. Yeah, and Show me. I, I also wondered if he, for whatever reason, doesn't currently have physical possession of the belt, and maybe AAA mm-hmm. does until he gets to Mexico this weekend. And so maybe after this weekend, we'll see it a lot more, or they'll debut a new belt for the design, oh, maybe, so, and we'll see something. Who knows? So the hole that we ha- we can punch in the theory is that he did have it at a at a Florida thing. He did have the belt when. He was wrestling against uh, Pentagon. Oh, or, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that, that that moment where yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it's interesting. So, so it had to like mend or something. So, um, I I feel like it it has more to do with with uh, AAA is more concerned about the imagery on this. I and we all know that Mexico has different perceptions of what. European mm-hmm. being a, on television means than what the United States does. And, but they both have a similar thing where it's a really, like, that was part of the draw of, uh, impact, as we'll talk about later in the show, was it was, it unprecedented to have another company's world champion on the show. Yeah. And, and uh, so that, that AAA just may want to limit the amount of time that they do that. They may view that as making their product look we it's my thought mm-hmm. yeah it's, it'll be interesting there's going to be a a lot of dynamic that we see play out this weekend and we will get to that here in a little bit but i think miranda is going to tell us some more about impact wrestling some more about kenny omega that kind of ties in with all of this yes for those of you who are regular listeners of this show uh you may know that we tend to address impact wrestling towards the end um of the show primarily due to not having a huge lucha presence um on their show though they have a, a huge dynamic cast uh and scene of, of wrestlers and uh of course they do have the triple a reina de la reina's champion uh taya valkyrie on there uh which we will get into a second she did have a match this week but mm. Last week at the end of Dynamite, and we talked about it on the show as well, the implications of Kenny Omega showing up on Impact Wrestling. And so, uh, of course, this ties in. We, we wanted to move this around because of, you know, his presence on Impact Wrestling this week and the tie-ins to Dynamite and also implications that we may see later this weekend at Triple Mania. Um, of course, this his his segment with Don Callis was towards the end of the show. So let me, you know, go a little bit in order about some things as well that uh, fans may want to look into or may be aware of, of what happened this week on Impact. 
Uh, first, we had the last uh, first round of the knockouts tag team, uh, tournament happening. Um, Taya Valkyrie and Rosemary teamed up to, uh, face Deanna Perrazzo and Kimberly. This was a really fun, great match. I was really going into this very excited to see the dynamic between Taya Valkyrie and Deanna Perrazzo. However, when I started to see the comparable, uh, similarities between Kimberly and Taya Valkyrie mm-hmm. and their style, yeah. And they had a beautiful double split uh segment in the, in the match. That piqued That's my so interest. Cool. I thought yeah. this is actually what I want to see more of. Um I think Kimberly and Ty Valkyrie have very similar uh styles and athleticism and um even looks that just made it really entertaining to watch. Um Ty mm-hmm. Valkyrie and, and Rosemary did uh win this match. Uh, there was a set point where Deanna Perrazzo accidentally kicked Kimberly, um, and Rosemary was able to take advantage of that for the pin. So they are moving on to the next round of the tournament where they're going to be facing Tasha Steeles and Kiera Hogan. So, and they have been some of the front runners in this tournament. So we will see what happens, uh, later on. Um, and the finals of this tournament is going to be at hard to kill in January. So we have, uh, about another week of semifinals and then we will know, uh, or a few weeks of semifinals and then we'll know who gets to the finals. Also, uh, after last week's impact and the final scene of Chris Bay holding on, uh, to the impact world champion, it was announced that Chris Bay would be facing Rich Swan at final resolution also happening this Saturday, December 12th. With that, we had a tag match for the main event of impact moose versus and Chris Bay. So moose and the team, yeah, moose and Chris Bay versus rich Swan and Willie Mack. And this match was highly entertaining in the sense that uh, Chris Bay approached Moose in the back prior to the match, trying to strategize and trying to come up with um, you know, something that they could follow. But if you know Moose's character as of late, he has been very just focused on himself and not engaging and just pretty much told Chris Bay, just do your thing. I'll do mine. And, and win the match and so um some really fun spots between all four of them because their athleticism is is crazy but we did see rich swan i mean uh, we did see chris bay get the pin on really mac um to to win the match and so we uh we are seeing elements of what we can expect for saturday with chris bay and rich swan uh for the impact world championship a very interesting way to end the night uh, leading into final resolution. But, well, they didn't really end the night because we did end up having the segment of Kenny Omega on Impact Wrestling. Uh, the episode actually started, which is kind of, again, bizarre world for many people. The episode of Impact started with highlights of AEW from last week. So and, no mention really of Impact yeah. <laughs> stories at the beginning of Impact. It was all AEW. Um, pretty much how we got to to that night. Uh, Kenny Omega winning the AEW championship with the assistance of Don Callis. Them running out uh, of the arena and Don making the announcement that they were going to explain all, tell all. Tuesday night on Impact. So at the beginning of the show, we saw a big uh, tour bus in the back parking lot uh, of the facility. And in there, we were told that that is where Kenny Omega and Don Callis were. Uh, Josh Matthews, commentator, was going to head to the trailer, to the bus, to interview Don and Kenny. And that's what we saw. And then there... um, Don Callis took control of, of the narrative, really explaining what his partnership and relationship with Kenny meant. But prior to that, uh, we had a pretty monumental uh, occasion on Impact Wrestling, talking about having another championship on another television show. Uh, they had kind of a, a small ceremony where they took off John Moxley's nameplate on the AEW yes, title yes. <laughs> and placed it with Kenny Omega's. Uh, lots of digs at WWE as well, you know, asking Josh if he knows Ambrose and, uh, you know, <laughs> if he's from Stanford. So lots of little digs there. That but essentially, awesome. 
John Cal has explained that he has known Kenny Omega for 28 years. He trained with his uncle, the Iron Sheik. Uh, Golden Sheik. Golden Sheik. Golden Sheik. The Golden yeah. Sheik. Well, and, and th- um, that's a whole thing then with Kenny and the Golden thing too. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but that's yeah. like yeah. such a. That's yeah. why it's a. That's why it's important, and it would be confusing because mm-hmm. the Iron Sheik is a very different yeah. person. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That was just a, a party and slip, as they like to call it. But, uh, yeah. Don was trained by the Golden Sheik. Uh, his his relationship with with Kenny, as far as being a mentor to him for years, following his career, and also things not happening by accident. Um, you know, Don's time in New Japan while Kenny was there, that wasn't a coincidence. Um, that uh, Don's career was in a uh, impact, and that was a place that Kenny was really looking at at one point in time. But you know, also Don just leveraging his resources and, and relationships throughout the wrestling community, all, all to help the cause of Kenny Omega. And now that we uh, everything's come together, the master plan has has come uh, into one. Uh, we now see Kenny Omega with what they believe is the most prestigious title in wrestling right now. They did also mention uh, him being the AAA campeon and that, you know, he may be wanting to collect some other belts, that the um, Impact has a world title. Maybe yeah. one day he'll come and take that title. Um, there's promotions all over the world that have titles and he's ready to take them all, which also alludes to why they were on a bus. Uh, another WWE reference, the Les- Lex Express was yeah. used yeah. and they're looking at <laughs> using this tour bus as a way to travel across the, the country to, uh, or even the world to collect more belts. So, so yeah. I had an interesting yes. revelation on this because we had the Lex Express bus there. And we had the helicopter, which is how the whole Lex Express thing started, is when Lex yes, came on the helicopter. Down on the helicopter, yes. the body slam Yokozuna. Yokozuna. So, yes. so, oh, Kenny Omega has to have an interest from an aircraft carrier. <laughs> that yes. would be so cool. <laughs> so. It's, it, folks, don't get excited. It's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. Do I it on your like- 2020 game. <laughs> now, we talked about this as the implications for Lucha Libre. In general, this was a big, uh, I mean, one of the biggest events in, in wrestling in years. And and the ratings did reflect that. So um, there was a pretty oh, big jump in viewership for Impact. Uh, last week, they had a viewership of 166,000. That jumped up to 221,000, a 33% increase. Um, of viewership just on TV, but the biggest jumps were through their Twitch channel. Uh, they also stream yeah. live on Twitch every week. That usually only has about a few thousand viewers, maybe 5,000 tops, and that's generous on, on a big show. Um, at the highest point of the night, they had 50,000 people streaming Impact Wrestling on Twitch. Yeah. And so, They've also seen a big jump on viewership in YouTube. They also decided to put the full episode on YouTube, which is very rare for them to do. Yeah. Uh, They've seen the traffic come through their social medias as well. At one point, they were trending number one on Twitter in uh, in the night, uh, during the night. Yeah. Yeah, on Tuesday. So, um, I mean, the results do show, at least for Impact, it was a uh, well-placed Mm-hmm. You know, uh, crossover. Also, real quick, we did have a commercial uh, that AEW had during the middle of the episode uh, featuring the Tonys, as I like to call them. Tony <laughs> Khan and Tony Schiavone, uh, where they, uh, Tony Khan started stating that uh, he had purchased some airtime on a, uh, on Impact Wrestling for AEW. Um, and they plugged all of the, the matches that we were going to see on Dynamite the next night and also some coy Moments. I don't know if they were, you know, if he was trying to be coy or a character or I'm not sure, but he talked about, you know, there was rumors that he was going to buy Impact Wrestling. He said, maybe, who knows? Um, at the end, kind of a play on Tony Schiavone, he asked him if, uh, Tony, you used to announce for Impact Wrestling. And Tony said, yes, for one night. And then I uh, quit wrestling for 19 years. <laughs> so, uh, very kind yeah, of. You know- yeah, the view this nice. whole thing as uh, as uh, AEW is the heel company when you're on 
Tuesday night. It's how yeah. I view the thing because Tony did, Tony did make that crack about quitting wrestling for 19 years. Tony Khan was totally uh, being condescending and nice about it, saying, "Oh, I've got enough money. I can use a token bone." He also meant like you know, like the rumor that I buy it I just you know because he thought that was funny. Like I totally see that they are, are from the AEW portrayal or the uh, Impact portrayal. They're trying to to say that AEW are invading and the guys in this. Mm-hmm. So there's there's some very interesting possible story that can come out of this. And he yeah. also mentioned that they have tag teams. So you know, yeah, like, that's that's the last thing I mentioned. <laughs> that they did play on a, a rumor that really has been going around about <laughs> possible crossover with uh, Impact tag team coming on uh, doing a match for AEW. So that seemed to fuel those those rumors. Whether Ooh, that is boy, true. Yeah, that will remain to be seen. But, I mean, a huge night for Impact Wrestling as far as viewership jump. Great matches in general. Um, and, and this being really the beginning of Kenny Omega's world tour. We will continue to see that later this week um, at uh, Triple Mania. And we'll talk more about that later on the show. I think that is also why Wednesday was a little disappointing, is that we had the big announcement and, and um, you know, all of the hoopla on Tuesday. And then it felt kind of flat on Wednesday because it was, you know, pretty much the, the same things. Nothing new, no new revelations or information. However, that may change in the future and we may see this. And again, I think maybe it's also waiting to see what happens at Triple Mania before the next step of the quote unquote master plan is revealed. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I think we're waiting to see what happens this point, and then that'll jump us right into day so expect another big week for lucha libra wrestling yes yes yeah well speaking of big things nxt had war games this past weekend uh this sunday actually uh the sixth and this was a, a great show, not stacked with a lot of matches, but when you have two war games matches in the same show you gotta you know uh, you, you realize you, you don't need a stacked card. Um, an hour plus right there. Yes, an hour plus. Now, prior to War Games, and to be honest, I don't know at what point this match actually happened. It wasn't necessarily on the pre-show. It wasn't in the show. So I don't quite remember. You guys may have to help me on this. But we did have an appearance by Legado de Fantasma, uh, Joaquin Wilde, Raul Mendoza, and Santos Escobar. Um, they teamed up against Kurt Stallion, Ashanti, the Adonis, and August Gray. And so this was a fairly quick match, only about seven minutes or so, but um, a really just quick, fun match. Um, and again, also a great appearance by Legado de Fantasma. Uh, Joaquin Wilde started the match with Austin Gray. Um, you know, some... Uh, Kind of not basic, but I would just say kind of uh, standard wrestling uh, until Raul Mendoza gets in. And then we see uh, Adonis step in. Um, and then that's when we start to see some of the interference. Santos tries to strike at Adonis uh, from outside of the ring and misses. Um, and then after a while, we see some rapid tagging in by all three members of uh, Legado de Fantasma to a beautiful spot with Raul and Joaquin, um, where Raul gets catapulted into uh, the ropes for some kind of like springboard flip uh, onto Adonis for a near fall. Um, but uh, throughout the match, again, the numbers game as far as the cohesion with Legado de Fantasma is very apparent. A lot of quick tags, which was making it very challenging for Kurt, Adonis, and Austin. However, when Kurt gets the hot tag, he had a huge amount of momentum and was very impressive. A beautiful drop kick into the corner. So many great moves. Um, 
And then we had a series of, of rapid movements and, and rapid uh, placement throughout the ring uh, towards the end. Um, however, we had Santos plant the Phantom Driver on August Gray for the win. Um, and that, too, is, again, Legado de Fantasma. And this group, too, is every, you know, everyone in this group have been people that Legado has, you know, had some kind of beef with. So they're not making any friends throughout the NXT locker nope. room. Not at all. <laughs> not, not. Not at all. If but, you're not uh, carrying that, that Lucha heritage with you, you're probably on their hit list. So, yeah. Yes. So, not seeing a whole lot of action from the other Fantasma right now on NXT. I do think it's because a lot of storylines are picking up. Um, so, again, I found this uh, match on uh, the WWE YouTube page, but I had to even search for it because it wasn't on their list of videos for War Games. And, yeah. again, I... That's it how was I just found kind of it. Was YouTube? Yeah. yeah. So and it wasn't I, on the pre-show. So I believe it was just a YouTube bonus match that they did. So uh, they probably filmed it with the idea that it might go on, or on the the pay-per-view, with, like the pre-show, and then realized that uh, they didn't need it on the pre-show. The pre-show also was only thirty minutes, so they were, uh, uh, you know kind of doing a smaller, more tight package for this anyway. So I think I think it was they wanted to get that match exposure somewhere, but they didn't they they didn't have a pre show to stick it on, basically. Well speaking of the main show, uh War Games began with the women's War Games match with Team Candace, Candace LeRae, Dakota Kai, Raquel Gonzalez and Tony Storm versus Team Shotzi. You had Shotzi Blackheart, Rhea Ripley Ember Moon and Io Shirai. And this match itself was pretty crazy. Uh, you had kind of a, a normal start with uh, Ember Moon and Dakota Kai starting. Um, but again, remember that Team Shotzi won the advantage last week on NXT. So uh, Shotzi came in at number two. Um, and so then you had that two on one. She brought in a toolbox into the match. And then that's when things just got crazy. Everyone after that um, brought something <laughs> into the ring. No, uh, it was largely the 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 faces that brought stuff in. That was one of the weird yeah. dynamics for me. Like yeah. even well, the heels were doing lots of weird cheating things. The faces. Yeah. Well, Tony brought in some uh, some chairs, I believe. Um, yeah. Uh, I know Io brought in. Well, she was trying to. Someone brought in a ladder. I was trying to bring uh, it. Eo successfully threw some stuff in the ring and got locked out and then tried to bring in the ladder multiple times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah th- there was a lot of, uh, items in the, uh, uh, in the, the match. Um, uh, but a, a few big takeaways is that one, there was, such a crazy good spot once we got uh, both Rhea Ripley and Raquel Gonzalez in the match. And they oh. had both cleared house that they were on opposite sides of the of the two rings. And when they realized that they had cleared house and it was just them two, that was a moment where I thought if there was a crowd there, it would be popular. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is I was going crowd. nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Was, my, my neighbors probably wanted to complain at that moment because I Going nuts here. Yes. Like I was, I was shouting like I was in the crowd. Yeah. The, the and, uh, so I, that... I need, sorry, I need to stress on this. Cause I was what led to that for me, and I'm sure lots of other fans on that was, to your point, the uh, other team had had the two on one advantage, and then uh, 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 Raquel Gonzalez came in and completely cleaned house that time while her teammate was. Uh, beat up and resting in the corner. So it was, uh, I mean, she did, it's part of her star making yeah. performance, but it really helped set up that, that to your point of the two of them cleaning house, like she'd already taken out one side of the team and it was, you had to wait until Rhea Ripley got in there for it to, to look even again, mm-hmm. even though they had the advantage at that time. Oh, well, yes. Yes. Yeah. And so, <laughs> uh, they, she really did, and, and her presence throughout the match. I mean, both her and, and Rhea really being those powerhouses, but I think the, uh, Raquel's really finding her place, as we've seen over the past oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
that mm-hmm. much. But again, I mean, we really, I think a lot of people enjoyed that match with Rhea and Raquel um, at uh, Halloween Havoc. And yes. it seemed like, there, you know, that, that moment where they both stood tall was this reigniting of that particular feud, which was uh And I'm, I'm a thousand there for it. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The NXT women's division is the strongest division in all of wrestling. Like, truly it is. And this match was fantastic because they had all these little elements like that that went into it. And the the women are so capable in the booking. It's so fantastic and well done, especially in comparison to WWE. You know, we kind of hinted about how NXT women's division. But, I mean, like, holy cow, these guys are just so fantastic. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And this match was, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, Tony Storm brought in the kendo sticks, which were, were used throughout. And yes. I think you know, the, the way that Io Shirai literally entered the match, too, one is just meme worthy of 2020. Uh-huh. Uh, really the genius of the sky. She took it to the next level, uh, by, uh, she was, she was locked out. So, uh, there was a spot where Indy Hartwell came out, um, when it was, uh, time, uh, to try and let EO in, or EO was, was the last one for, uh, the team to come in. Um, EO was knocked out and allowed, um, Candace to come in, close the gate behind them or behind her, um, and and Indy Hartwell came out to lock it and uh, took the key with her. So there was no way for Io Shirai to go into this match, but the only way she could go is up. So she climbed up the cage, put a trash can over her, and just just dropped in, literally dropped in. So. so good. Just a, a fun way to enter, just and also the meme of 2020 at this point. Like that is the moment. But uh, a big surprise, I think, here for a lot of people is uh, Raquel Gonzalez getting the win. She yes. uh, drove. She did that yeah. beautiful one-handed uh, choke slam power bomb through yeah. a, a ladder on Io Shirai. Yeah, um, and won the match. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I want to so, clarify for the listeners at home that have, may not have seen this. It wasn't. A regular one-handed choke slam. She was on the ropes at the t- time too. So yeah, she, mm-hmm. yeah. It was like nothing you've ever seen. It was, it was beautiful. It really was. Like it was amazing. Yeah. And so that yeah. was uh, that was something else. And I think many many people were impressed with her performance uh, from this from this match. Um, and it overall, everyone did great. I mean, this too looked like Shotzi's just, uh, you know, natural state. Um, she was able to use that kind of reckless abandonment style in her wrestling throughout uh, the match. I think she did kind of a, a, a beautiful drop onto Candice from a ladder, uh, to onto Candice. However, uh, Candice was wisely near a chair and was able to use that to kind of protect herself. So Shotzi landed right on a chair from the ladder and just, uh, I mean, a lot of chaos throughout the match, but a lot of great spots. So, um, just a, a great match overall to see. And, and we saw some of that heading into this week's NXT Raquel Gonzalez versus Ember Moon. Um, as kind of a continuance of the story. Um, and again, um, Raquel Gonzalez using her size, uh, initially starting the match by choking out Ember and throwing her around the ring. Um, Ember tried to rally, but, uh, really Raquel used her size, her, I mean, the kicks, really the way that she utilizes her size to really work on smaller opponents, um, was is uh amazing to to see um she yeah. even used that to kind of hit her and, and put a choke hold on her uh, right against one of the the steel posts um and mm-hmm. we had um gonzalez she she caught uh i think i think there was a move where ember was trying to do the eclipse Gonzalez caught her and did the one uh, armed power bomb for for the win. Um, and after that match, uh, you had Tony Storm coming in uh, attacking Ember Moon, uh, but then Maria Ripley came out, and then again we had the stare down between Rhea Ripley and Raquel Gonzalez. So as much as it may have seemed like maybe we were going to see Raquel in the title picture, which still may be a possibility, 
we still may see uh, Gonzalez Ripley too somewhere down the line, and I'm not oh, mad at that. We're, I, we're definitely seeing th- that. Uh, hopefully, we also get the title picture. I mean, my yeah. fantasy booking scenario is Raquel wins the rematch, using that momentum to propel her to a, a title shot. Yes. But yeah. So. And- uh, we also had Jake Atlas defeat Isaiah Swerve Scott um, in a fairly short match um, and some tension between them, even though they were pretty friendly before and have been teammates before. Uh, Jake Atlas has had this kind of newfound aggression with him, and he's really, um, I don't know if, if his feud with Legado the Fantasma has kind of changed him, but he's now realizing a little bit that, you know, it's not all about friendship in NXT. It's, it's really about, you know, what you could do in the ring and working your, your way up to, you know, whoever you want to face next. So Jake Atlas continues to rise uh, throughout the NXT roster. And we've had some big developments in the championship scene. Finn Balor came back. We had a teaser during war games that he was going to be back after um, this is the first time we've really seen him after his big match against Roderick Strong um, uh, about a month ago, maybe a little bit more. Um, and when he comes out, and, you know, lets the NXT roster know that he's back. He was confronted by a few people. First, Pete Dunne. Um, and, and then, uh, who was part of the losing team, uh, with Pat McAfee's team last, or on, on, at War Games, Roderick Strong coming back and referencing their fight and that they have unfinished business. Then Damian Priest comes out and saying he's been eager to have an opportunity to face, uh, uh, to face, um, uh, Finn Balor. And, you know, pretty much Balor says, that's great. You figure it out between yourselves. I'm going to go. Uh, not like that, but in so many words. However, yeah. as he goes up the ramp, the familiar music of Karrion Cross, uh, plays out and Scarlet comes out to approach Finn Balor. And Finn Balor already knows and he's prepared and he says it before she can even say a word, tick tock. So he knows that he has multiple people, uh, out against him. And then later on that night, we do see, uh, Killer Cross, uh, Karrion Cross, uh, make his return to NXT, uh, attacking Damian Priest after his match. Uh, could be revenge for maybe something Damian mentioned earlier about, you know, Scarlett kind of being the errand person for Karrion. Um, Karrion obviously does not take lightly to that kind of talk. And so he came out and attacked yeah. Damian. So, um, it is now happening. We have, Karrion Cross back on the scene. We also have multiple competitors seeking um, an opportunity for the NXT Championship. Um, so we will see what the next, you know, few weeks hold with this. We we will have to wait and see. But uh, this seems all to be leading to New Year's Evil, which is going to be uh, the marquee show for NXT for, for New Year's Eve. So uh, hopefully matches are announced for that soon. But um, you know, who, I don't know, are we going to see a uh, carrying more maybe in a four way, uh, or five way maybe to determine a number one contender, or is it going to be more of, you know, multiple competitors plus Finn Balor? I don't know. Yeah. There's a lot of possibility there. That's all very exciting. Like series of contenders matches would be really cool. But then again, like a big five way title match would be exciting and, yeah. You know, Finn Balor wouldn't have to be pinned by Karrion, and they could keep up yeah. their thing. And yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, it. yeah. So you you don't know, and you want to kind of protect both Finn recovering from an injury, uh, Roderick Strong, I know recovering from injury, Karrion recovering from injury. So um, those are all things to consider in the future. Um, so again, we will continue to cover uh, Impact and NXT along with AEW, WWE, all of that as part of the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast. But up next, uh, Dusty has some AAA news. Yeah, well, this weekend is Triple Mania. I mean, this is the main event for AAA every year. It's the, you know, the big deal. It's the granddaddy. It's the thing that makes you excited. It's the thing you look forward to all year. Normally, it's around late August, but this year, due to COVID and everything, it's been delayed until this weekend. They're going to be on streaming live 
on both Facebook Watch and on YouTube. They no longer have a partnership with Twitch, so they're only going to run via Facebook and YouTube. Their viewership was much higher there anyway, and so they have severed that contract with Twitch. And, yeah, it's very exciting. No English commentary this year, but you may have some options. We'll touch on that in a moment here. But the big news, we got the Marvel show, the Funko Luchadors. There's been some speculation um, Meltzer reports that there's two AAA guys, one AEW guy, and one MLW guy. So when I tried to think about it, I think, you know, that the Daga keeps saying he's going to be there. So that makes sense for one of the AAA guys because he's nowhere on the card. But I was thinking maybe somebody like Angelico for the Captain America character. And then Leo Rush for the MLW wrestler. We've heard about him. And he would make an amazing Spider-Man. Think of the way we've seen him fly around the mm-hmm. ring. Like, yeah. we need Leo for our Spider-Man character. So those are my guesses. I don't have any guesses for the other AAA guy or who Daga might be. He's, you know, either going to be the Venom character or uh, Terror Pent- or Terror Purpura. I believe is the character's name, the Thanos character. I I could see him going either way on that one, but it'll be exciting. I'm excited for that match. And the rumor about Pentagon's injury on Dynamite was that it was actually a real injury, and the spot was to take him out of the match as quickly as possible because he wants to rest the knee up before Triple Mania. And that's also rumored to be why Kenny Omega didn't wrestle at all this week, was that he was also resting up before Triple Mania. So that gives me quite a bit of excitement for the show this weekend, you know, that these guys are really giving it their main focus and... We'll see what happens. I'm excited. And speaking of being excited and seeing what happens, we can announce that there will be a Lucha Central live stream alongside Triple Mania. It will be live starting at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on Lucha Central's YouTube channel. And there will be members of the Lucha Central family. Brendan and myself will be there. We'll have guests popping in, other members of the Lucha Central family. Uh, and Miranda will be there for a little while. And hopefully we may even have a backstage interview with one of the luchadors involved in Triple Mania. So you really need to head over to the Lucha Central YouTube page and follow them. And then you'll get that notification when we start our live stream on Saturday. <laughs> It's up right now, so you can even just click uh, remind me of this later, which is what I was told all my coworkers to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is really going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of the Lucha Central personalities throughout the podcast network on. Um, we're going to have some special guests. Just some – yeah, it's going to be exciting. I, I think it will really be a lot of fun. And if you don't understand a lot of Spanish, hopefully, you know, like maybe you could run us in a second window and kind of give it a listen during the show and, you know, help you follow along a little bit. And we do have at least one confirmed Spanish speech speaker that wants to be there for the whole show. So, I mean, yeah. Miranda, you're off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> Phew, because... Oh. My Spanish <laughs> interpretation is is uh, wild at best, so I would give some interpretation. You'd be like, what? what? Are you sure? I, yeah, that's what I'm hearing, you guys. Just just wanted to let you know. Yeah, but so yeah, we would really appreciate it if everybody kind of go on to YouTube yeah. Saturday night. Like I say, it'll be on YouTube Live on Lucha Central's YouTube channel, 7 p.m. Central. Also, that's Mexico time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And yeah, it'll be a really good time. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll be definitely reading out your comments and other things as long as they're appropriate to read on the air. Yeah. <laughs> I, some of us Lucha fans get a little too excited. We even had to remind some of the staff maybe to, to hold back on the language during in the main <laughs> event. That... <laughs> That's just how it is. But yeah, we would, oh, uh, I, we're hoping yeah. to have a lot of interaction from the fans, from the listeners, from you guys. We just, yeah, we'd love to kind of interact with you and take this yeah. moment to, to meet people and kind of chat about this thing we all love so much on such a special occasion, you know, yeah. and be it's a lot kind of fun. Of, it's kind of our opportunity to have 
people from a bunch of the shows and a bunch of the other programming aspects of Lucha Central all in one place so you can kind of get a better idea and put it we will have the video footage of our faces you can actually see what what people yeah. look like mm-hmm. yeah it's and then of course we're you know we've made plans to have special guests and hopefully we'll have a few surprises going on too so well worth the time to to check it out even if you don't want to have us in the world and you're like no i would much rather hear spanish commentary come back and check it out later and and sync it up or or what because there will be some fun things i guarantee yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun and i i hope everybody comes checks it out so this saturday night december the 12th uh 7 p.m central 8 p.m eastern 5 p.m pacific and that kind of leads us naturally. We we have this week in Lucha Libre, and you know you need to be sure we're talking about LuchaCentral.com. You need to go to LuchaCentral.com every day for this day in Lucha Libre by Pep Carrera for information, birth dates, anniversaries, amazing videos, everything. It's all about Lucha Cent- Lucha Libre, and that's at LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. Uh, this week, I chose December the 9th, 1983, when Rio de Jalisco, rather, Jr. won El Egipcio's Mask in a mask versus match, mask, a puestas match at the Arena Mexico. And this way, we know the identity of Jose Luis Hernandez. El Egipcio died a couple of years ago, and I went online at the time, and I started watching anything I could find. I ended up even collecting a mask by the end of it. He was cool. But this was a huge match in his career. He was a legend in the WWC, and his character of an Egyptian pharaoh was really unique at that time. And his willingness to spare no cost towards his masks and towards his gear led to him being kind Kind of revolutionary in that way and definitely before his time and the guys we see with new gear every time we see him now like he was one of the first luchadors to do that and so he was very popular and he prepared for this match by growing a mustache and doing everything he could do to adopt what the audiences of the time saw as like an Egyptian or an Arabic look. And losing the mask only fueled his popularity. He and Ryo were both the main two Technico guys for WWC at the time. For a while, they'd even been tag team teammates, but they didn't get along in real life. So they returned against each other with Deli Hipsio getting the Rudo turn. And this was an intense three falls match at Arena Mexico. It almost immediately gets bloody with the Hipsio biting Ryo on the head. We can't see it due to the black mask and the grainy 1983 video quality, but the announcer tells us pretty quickly that there's blood dripping from under the mask. Ellie Hipsio gets the first fall then to surprisingly loud cheers. Ryo got the second fall after reversing the neck breaker in a really exciting moment. And then that's when the battle really began. There were headshots. There was so much blood. Just more everything from what you'd seen before until they just get too tired to go anymore. They likely both had concussions. At the end, Ryo got the third fall for the best two out of three. And Nelly Hipsio lost his mask and lost the match and revealed his name to be Jose Luis Hernandez. Brendan, what did you pick this week? So this week, I chose December 9th, 1990, and anyone who knows me is not going to be overly surprised by this. This was Kinect winning the UWA World Championship for the 10th time. However, what is kind of interesting and unique about this was that he beat Big Vader of WCW fame for, for this so match. Cool. Yeah, um, so I was on the fine footage of this exact match, found a supercut of Vader's time in Mexico. And he was masked he was back the, then. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was he was wearing uh like in just the like the strap either. It was like a mask. Yeah, like a lucha style. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. And he was exceptionally uh hated. <laughs> it, was like, <laughs> it was like you could the the audience loved hate him. So it was you know, you had Kenneck pretty at that point, established himself as the the defender of Mexico throughout the entire 1980s, winning it from four years. And uh, you have, I mean, this imagery of this giant man, one of the men that makes Connect small. Uh, you know, and, and I mean, yeah, I, I 
unfortunately, like I said, I couldn't get the big matches, a, a lot of footage of it, but just the the fact that it was Connect's pretty historic 10th win. I don't believe a lot of other people accomplished that. And also, uh, uh, it was Big Van Vader. So those of us here, uh, it, the, uh, the WCW era of watching shows are, you know, I mean, it's an easy to take, imagine how it played out and it's exciting. Miranda, what, what, uh, fun did you have for us this week? Yes. So I picked something a little bit more recent, which is not a surprise, but I picked a match, uh, from a promotion we don't typically have on, uh, this week or this day in which a Libre history, which is why I was very interested in watching it and, uh, Discussing it, uh, I picked December 13th, 2019, and that is when Dragon Lee won the Ring of Honor World Championship, World Television Championship, say that again, World yeah. Television Championship, after beating Shane Taylor at Final Battle. And uh, one of the reasons I picked this is was because, uh, of course, Ring of Honor is not a promotion we usually have on This Week in Lucha Libre history. Mm-hmm. Um, and because now they do have a pretty strong Lucha Libre, his- or Lucha Libre presence at this time, mm-hmm. um, this too helps solidify that as, as having a luchador hold one of their champions. Um, this is the first uh, reign uh for Dragon Lee as TV champion and he's had one of the longest reigns uh over 300 uh days at 363 days at this time um also another interesting fact is that um during this reign he wrestled in New Japan um part of the team uh that faced Jushin Thunder Liger in his final match while he was yeah. there uh being referenced as Ryu Lee so that was a big deal for not only for him, but for the Ring of Honor uh, television championship at that time. This is bringing out the, <laughs> <laughs> the mask. Um, but th- this match of itself, when you think about Shane Taylor and Dragon Lee, kind of that classic, you know, luchador, smaller sized wrestler versus a powerhouse brawler in Shane Taylor. <laughs> and so you had a lot of that dynamic throughout the match. Uh, with, um, you know, Dragon Lee showing some, some beautiful lucha moves, a dive over the top rope into a, a handstand and flipping onto the ground that was early on in the match. Um, however, Shane Taylor really took a lot of, um, uh, of control in this match. Um, and there was moments where Dragon Lee was able to rally, but Shane really again, utilized his size advantage um, throughout the match until Dragon Lee found an opening. And that's when he really utilized that quickness and speed um, to help kind of redirect Shane Taylor. Um, and really, it, it even though um, you kind of typically see this match between people of two different sizes, it still was really well done. Um, and the final big knee at the end, uh, that big rally point where a uh, dragon lane moves down his knee pad and runs and hits that running knee to the face of Shane Taylor. You could see when he gets that three count, the sense of relief and kind of being overwhelmed uh, at the same time. And so it was really, uh, to me, I thought that was just a really cool aspect of the match and just those little details that were great. So, um, I think that uh, this is a, a just a great match for anyone to watch. I mean, it was only last year, which seems so much has changed in just the past year. Mm-hmm. So, um, and with, uh, you know, the, the next ROH uh, event coming up very soon, it's kind of a great way to reminisce and kind of think more about, you know, who will, what, what we'll be seeing um, next week with Ring of Honor. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Dragon Lee's work in Ring of Honor is really incredible, and mm-hmm. I have never ceased to be impressed with anything he does. So I'm excited to see what they do next week. Excited to see where they go. Absolutely agree. Um, yeah, I somehow have to skip some of that, uh, but yeah, Dragon Lee will be the winner of uh, the opening match, which is Tony and Dak Draper, LSG, and Josh Woods. Oh, okay. Whoever wins wins. Of that four-person match, will then go on to face Dragon Lee for that TV championship, and then Bandito Flamita Ray Oro is going to be defending against Shane uh, uh, 
Moses and Cone. I don't, I'm not, I took, I cribbed somebody else's notes and I think they had a bunch of typos in there. <laughs> uh, so in addition to the, the Roosh, Brody King match. So, uh, that is next weekend and it is going to be fantastic. Between that and a pure rules tag team match, fans of old school Lucha Libre and new Lucha Libre have a lot to watch on that one pay per view. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And I think though that too is going to be kind of maybe a change in guard, um, with maybe some of the luchadors and, and their championships. So, you know, I know there's been a lot of speculation about Roche. Uh, maybe Dragon Lee drops the title. We see um, changes with the six-man uh, tag team championships. You know, who who knows? So I think, too, being able to reflect a little bit on the, the rain. And unfortunately, because there hasn't been as much wrestling this year, didn't get the chance to see them in action very much. Right. But that was a very big thing for ROH mm-hmm. to have – you know, a huge chunk of their champions be luchadors. From the same faction, too. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, in other news that I, uh, on that, since we're there, I'll just, and I'm remembering, the uh, Roosh has been teasing, adding a member to the faction. So that tends to make me believe that the majority of those guys who have been having contract doubts for a little while now are planning on staying. Oh, so, very cool. So, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of a reading between the lines sort of thing. A uh, Cubs fan who does lucha blogging had a similar theory as well, uh, where he's like, you don't, you don't add new members if everybody's gonna leave. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, you know, you can do whatever you want. It's 2020, but that's the the sensible booking is you keep the core and add some to to keep it back, keep it the same momentum or you keep all of it and then add more to give it more momentum so um it that another thing to keep an eye out for that and you can we can really or next weekend we can keep you know, start speculating to what those contracts might look like based on who retains and who doesn't and what they do after that yeah, okay. very cool well uh, of course, you can uh, see this day in Lucha Libre history uh, on LuchaCentral.com. But, Brendan, can you tell our listeners what else they can find on LuchaCentral.com? Well, I mean, you can find pretty much everything Lucha Libre on there. That's that's really, like to Dusty said, you should go on there every day because there's always something. Yes. And so, it changes constantly. If you are, uh, yeah, well, every, on a daily basis, you can find something new. There's news breaking out, all of that. I'm going to give the, the more formal version of this, but if so if you're listening and you haven't done it, you haven't visited LuchaCentral.com, it's time to do it because all of that free stuff is there. LuchaCentral.com is your online home for Lucha Libre where you can get the top news in English and in Spanish. And it's not my Spanish, so it's really good. <laughs> uh, find the best curated video content and original content not seen anywhere else. Lucha Libre is happening in your area. Find photo galleries top photographers covering Lucha Libre around the world. A place where voices heard from weekly polls to annual awards, seen and read by top executives, all of the major Lucha Libre promotions across the globe. And again, it's free. LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. And yeah, like, definitely check in every day. There's recaps, there's news, there's... I mean, it, it is it is a fantastic place to uh, if you're if living in the pandemic and you want to forget about what, about it, the fact every day if you think it takes 20 hours to get five minutes, then it's a great way to kill some time if nothing else. Brendan, you have some CMLL news uh, for us. Well, yeah. yes, indeed. Uh, CMLL announced this uh, announced recently they are going to have. Another their monthly eye pay per view, but this one is going to be our Christmas present because it is on December 25th. So um, they haven't announced a lot of matches for it. It is again going to be on uh, Ticket Ticketmaster Live, so it'll be through the same, same as if anybody had been buying those uh, before. If, if not, I, I'm certain that we can find to get you the links to the Ticketmaster Live. It's a little it's a little touchy to do as an English speech, speaker the first time. 
But, uh, we can get you through it if you want to get this, this Christmas show. And they've announced two matches for, for it so far. Uh, Ultimo Guerrero, Euphoria, Grand Guerrero will be facing off against Sanson, Quatrero, and Foras, Forastro. So, uh, uh, that will be for the World Trios Championship. Uh, those are kind of regular in their trios division. So, uh, you may feel like you've seen this match before. Have you seen this match on Chris before? That's what I want to know. Um, and you'll have Angel de Oro, Misico, and Caristico. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. You'll have Angel de Oro, Mystico, Caristico, Atlantis Jr., Felino, Sobrenario Jr., Negro Casas, Mephisto, Nebula Roja, Star Jr., Stuka Jr., Felino Jr., in the Copa Junior VIP. So it will be a big tournament of the young, really fast guys that everybody loves to see wrestle for for the rest of the pay-per-view. I mean, that's what they've done in the last couple is have tournaments and cyberneticos, and it really adds something. I, I feel like I, I'm getting a little more of my pay-per-view my worth out of seeing a full tournament in place in one. Um, those of you who have careful ears will notice that I said Felino Jr. in there instead of, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, he, uh, Dusty, w- Dusty, uh, I, I'm, I didn't put it in there when he changed his name and I don't want to say the wrong thing and have, uh, somebody correct me cause I know I will. So who, what did we know him as, as of last week? He, he was Tiger generally, but he was often called Tiger Casas. Um, just to kind of differentiate yeah. him, he had been Tiger Kid before that. A lot of people were kind mm-hmm. of familiar with him, and uh, but he had been Tiger or Tiger Costas for like 13 years in CMLL. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy to have a name change now. Yeah, it's a little uh, odd timing, but uh, I mean, you know, it's it's Felino. Mm-hmm. So you want to have a Felino Junior? I mean, that's just that's just smart thinking. It sounds like something that he had wanted to do for a while, but for whatever reason, they had to get CMLL approval, and that just kind of happened more recently. And so, who knows for what reason, yeah. but, I mean, maybe it's some backstage business. I don't know, but it's kind of interesting. You also have to get Bling and Bach permission to sign off on it. And yeah. interesting, an interesting thing that I have learned by talking to other luchadors who tried to have names in uh in mexico you have to register with the with that and so even if a boxer has, it uses that as their moniker if they're using it it use it so uh iron mike is not we had two iron mikes in the in the 90s just one was a really bad i shouldn't say bad a, he had not a very good win loss record as a wrestler <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that couldn't happen in Mexico. So yeah, it's very cool. Uh, that is our CMLL for the week. Again, they're taking most of December off from red, from big programming. They'll have this Christmas show, and they will have their weekly show, which is uh, is going up on YouTube. But uh, uh, it's really light content, so there will not be a lot of CMLL news until after January. Well, excellent. Look forward to when that picks up again. Well, we continue to have MLW back in the mix with MLW Fusion airing every Wednesday night uh, prior to AEW and NXT, which is great for us wrestling fans uh, to have some wrestling not competing. Um, but a few interesting events happened this week on MLW Fusion. First, we had uh, the uh, premiere match for Calvin Tankman, um, him facing Senshi. And this, as I, you know, talk about kind of typical big man, small, high flyer, lucha libre um, match, but I wouldn't say this was completely typical. Um, Tank Man showed some flexibility of his own. He had a pretty good leapfrog over Senshi, uh, but also displayed some pretty big powerhouse moves. He had a really uh, strong spine buster along there. Um, Senshi really trying to utilize... Um, that Lucha Libre style to uh, capture uh, or, or to help 
distract in a way uh, uh, Tankman uh, from his his game. Um, he had a really good handspring Pele kick um, and, and uh, several kicks uh, throughout the match, um, really trying to get him off his feet. However, um, Tankman uh, won the uh, match with the Tankman driver um, within uh, a short amount of time. So uh, great effort by Zenshi, but you kind of knew going into this match, this was really a way to showcase Calvin Tankman. Another interesting thing, though, that happened uh, on Fusion was a vignette from Zelina de la Renta, who appeared uh, and summoned uh, Pascual Mendoza, who a lot of people are, are stating is Mil Muertes um, from Lucha Underground while in the ruins. So uh, he mm-hmm. has not appeared yet, but it seems like MLW is teasing him as an associate of Selena De La Renta's um, in her ongoing feud with Conan and MLW. So um, that uh, we will see. It, it'll be very interesting to see if he shows up as Mil Muertes or one of his many other identities. But uh, Yeah, yeah, that's exciting. Um, and in a semifinal uh, match in the 2020 Opera Cup tournament, uh, Low Key versus Richard Holiday. Uh, Low Key won um, with the Warriors' wrath. Um, that in and it of itself too is a great match to to watch. Again, I think Richard Holiday is someone that I, I think of as a great character, but surprisingly is. is and maybe not surprisingly, but is is great in the ring as well. Um, but I mean, low key is his amazing abilities, and I think that um, his 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 versatility in the ring is just so I think undervalued. I don't think it's underrated. I think it's just undervalued um, in wrestling. So he is advancing to the finals of the 2020 Opera Cup. Um, and an announcement earlier this week from MLW is that they're going to be hosting a special event on January 6th. It is going to be Kings of Coliseum, which originally was supposed to be a pay-per-view, uh, but MLW officials have announced that it's going to be free. It's going to be available on wow. YouTube, Fubo Sports, and Pluto TV. One of the matches announced for this um, is for the World Middleweight Championship, Myron Reed versus Leo Rush. And that's going to be one of the main events for uh, that event or that um, show. So um, very fortunate that MLW is continuing, you know, with uh, showing their products on YouTube for many fans. It's great um, to have uh, an affordable option for wrestling and great pro wrestling. Again, I mean, if you are a wrestling purist, MLW is really um, the product to see. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And having a free event like Kings of Coliseum um, available on January 6th is great because, as we've talked about, we're not getting a whole lot of, of shows and matches uh, now, not only because of the holiday season, but, you know, because of other things. So to have uh, something available very uh, soon after the new year is going to be great. So uh, there there is uh, something great to watch on January 6th, MLW Kings of Coliseum. That's that's yeah. great. Um, yeah, I've got to check that out. Huge props to them once again for making a, such a positive choice, like to, to just give it for free. So uh, MLW continues to be a company that uh, I I will happily support because of choices they make to keep their talent safe, and then the choices they make to make keep us as fans as happy. Like this is. Uh, the kind of responsibility I'd like to see out of some of the bigger companies now and again. They don't have to do it all the time, but, you know, yeah. maybe once in a while. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> another fun tidbit is that they may be exploring um, going beyond their 60-minute time frame for MLW Fusion. Um, that's oh. another thing that I think about MLW is it's really presented in such a great format in, you know, 60 minutes, and they could do so much – too with with more time they usually only air about two to three matches in that time frame with a few segments and for a lot of fans who get burnt out on wrestling that's a great amount of time no it's yeah um, it's a nice little refresher like you you get everything you want it's it's uh uh, always one of my top contenders best single hour pro wrestling 
Mm-hmm. Like, especially now that NWA Power isn't on, like, the, which has a sim- similar format. You'd got an, uh, two to three matches and, and some segments. So, I mean, it's proven. It's proven that that works, that you can put a uh, good wrestling with lots of story and lots of action and just have it take place in one hour. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be three hours. I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lucha Underground was an hour too, wasn't yep. it? Yeah, yeah, it was an hour and back then it was hands down the best single hour of wrestling time. So, absolutely. Yeah. Well, in our final news story of this week, Brendan, you're going to be talking about another show that's happening very, very soon. We already have a packed uh, weekend of wrestling, but we have a show on Friday that we think our fans should tune into. So assuming that we are able to, to get our uploading problems fixed and get the show out on time, if you're hearing this on the day this goes up, be able to then go watch Mission Pro Wrestling who is hosting an event called Run It Back, and it will be, obviously, if you live anywhere near near the state of Texas, you probably know where the all the events going to be. But it will also be, um, I believe it's fight, isn't it? On title it? match, title match network. Title title match network, which is similar but not the same. Uh, apology to title match network for constantly. Uh, conflating the two of you um it will it'll feature some matches from from large that we talk about quite a bit like there will be a match Lacey ryan rosa Nea, killer kelly and kimberly red velvet and ray chanel uh shell guerrero will once again be announcing and of course somebody called thunder rosa is going to be in the main event um, <laughs> <laughs> whoever she is <laughs> I might have good heard luck, of her. Good luck drawing with that name in your main event. <laughs> yeah. And of course, um, you're going to have the, uh, the show itself is going to be, have a special ring announcer, Shaul Guerrero. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I mean, hello. Like yeah. there's just so much, uh, there, uh, for you. I believe they've had a change with Killer Kelly. Um, is not going to be on the card. I think she's being replaced. Uh, by, um, oh man. I, I couldn't confirm this. I know what you're talking about, but I couldn't, find the, the, uh, the tweet <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that changed it. That was, I, yeah. yeah. I, they I did announce that something. Allison. Go ahead. Yeah, I think with Allison K. Is, I mean, honestly, that's, uh, uh, that is thing against Killer Kelly. That's, but that's kind of trading up because Allison K is, on fire right now. Yes, is, yes. yes Alex and Kayla are replacing Killer Kelly in this. Yep. So I just had to, to go through my sources to, to confirm. Uh, but, uh, and yeah, I mean, that's the, the crazy thing. I mean, they are on their feet constantly trying to put together the best women's matches in the entire U.S. And so, um, mm-hmm. they, they, this is now, I believe, their third show since they're yes. rebranded. And so, um, and they have a lot of talent that we see on, um, AEW Dark, um, on other promotions throughout the U.S. So mm-hmm. I would say that if you are a big uh, fan of AEW, and especially if you've watched AEW Dark, uh, as of recently, you've probably seen some of the, the women, um, Absolutely. that are going to either mm-hmm. be on this show or have been on Mission Pro Wrestling shows in the past. So, um, yeah, I think this is just something well worth uh, people's time to to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's on a Friday, so it's not on Wednesday. You don't have to fight for anything else. It's uh, it's uh, that'll mean it'll be opposite SmackDown for most of us. And you know what? Smack will still be there, so you can watch it yeah. later. Yeah. <laughs> and again, it's from the title uh, match net or yeah. Uh, Oh gosh, I even just forgot. Title that. Match Network. Title That's, Match Network, title, yes. I kept wanting to say title match, match network. I was like, Title Match <laughs> Network. So you can purchase it through the Title Match Network. Um and uh the streaming is, is great through them. So mm-hmm. yes, I mean um just details that are on Mission Pro's website too, just mm-hmm. yeah, to make it Mission easy. Pro- MissionProWrestling.net. You can go to titlematchnetwork.com as well. Um 
And so you have your options there. So now you know. If you didn't know, now you know. Now you know. You know. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of another edition of the Lucha Central Weekly Podcast. Uh, A big thank you to everyone who listens to us. If this is your first time or you are returning to this podcast, a big thank you. Uh, Don't forget, I mean, we are part of the Lucha Central Podcast Network, and that means we are part of LuchaCentral.com. So make sure you check it out, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. You can also check out Lucha Central on social media at Lucha Central on Facebook and Instagram and at LuchaCentral.com on Twitter. You can also check out Lucha Central's YouTube page that has exclusive interviews uh, with luchadors, matches, lots of fun content. Uh, Denise Alcedo continues to kill it with her interviews. Those are posted very frequently. And again, it's all free just for you. Uh, Speaking of social media, well, let's tell our listeners where they can find us. Dusty, where can our listeners find you? I am on Instagram at Dusty Murphy, all one word, and I'm at Facebook.com slash Dusty Murphy. Again, all one word. And, Brendan, where can our listeners find you? Uh, I am a 2-1 T-shirt guy. That's the number, 3-2-1. T-shirt is all spelled out, T-shirt guy. And I am on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, where once again I have successfully logged in more than twice this week. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on Twitter, which is where you're most likely going to be able to find me. Because even right now I am perusing Twitter looking for last minute news. So. And me and Miranda Morales, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at the hashtag Miranda. Hashtag spelled out. And don't forget, I mentioned the Lucha Central YouTube page. That is where the Triple Mania live streaming is going to be occurring this Saturday, December 12th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central. I I do have, actually, since I was perusing, I do have a little reminder. Again, uh, Lucha Central this whole week has been doing Triple Mania a week, where they've been talking about the history of Triple Mania, uh, highlighting special matches. So every day there's been a different little Triple Mania week feature. Definitely try and, and check out that before you come in and, and watch this year's Triple Mania so that you can uh, participate in some of the conversations we will be having on that live stream. So that is 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, 8, uh, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific. So if yeah. you're in one of the time zones, which we all know you should be, <laughs> just, just check it out. You can go to the U, to Lucha Central's YouTube page. You can get the reminder of when the stream starts, and that way you don't have to worry about what time zone that you're in or have to put in a yeah. reminder. YouTube will remind you for you. It's true. Yes. So make sure you do all that. Um, you know, a big thank you to all of our listeners. As always, we greatly uh, enjoy this show and love bringing you Lucha news every single week. And we'll do it again next week and even this weekend. So, again, make sure you check out LuchaCentral.com and the Lucha Central YouTube page. For Dusty Murphy and Brendan Barr, I'm Miranda Morales. Thank you all. And you'll see us and hear us next time. <laughs>